hello and thank you so much for watching my name is katie and this is where i share a little bit about what i've been making with a focus on knitting but i have been doing a lot more crochet and cross stitching as of late and sometimes i'll throw in some other like small crafts that i'm doing and my reading but i always start with my making and one other thing i'm trying to get better at is introducing when I'm actually wearing <laughs> something that I've made because I don't think I did that in the last um, episode but I am wearing my cardigan number four today and this is by my favorite things knitwear this was a beast of a project for me uh, one that I started very early on in my kind of knitting journey you could say and it was not a beginner pattern at all i think this was probably after i had done a simple cardigan and another simple kind of pullover and then i dabbled in color work with the tecumseh sweater by caitlin hunter which is also a good kind of beginner and into color work but after that i was like i have this down now i'm just going to go out and find something that I really want to make and this pattern was always going to be somewhere <laughs> in my kind of to-do list and I was like okay this is it this this is the time to start it and I was not ready so I ended up knitting this um I, it was one that I would rip back after doing it like halfway many times and it's also very expensive because um I did not know about uh, Drops Mohair, which would be maybe a better um, option if you want something more affordable. But with this sweater, you are actually holding three strands of mohair for the entire thing. So I would just buy pieces of it. Uh, I actually use the Debbie Bliss Angel. I would buy pieces of it here and there and it took me probably a couple years to actually get all of my yarn together and finally sit down and make myself figure it out. And like I said, that was with a lot of um, trial and error. So if you are wanting to do this project, either be very thorough because it's very possible to do it a lot earlier. I'm very, very bad at instructions or make it um, a not beginner project <laughs> because it was not that for me at all. <laughs> but all of that aside, we can get to what I am making now. So last time I shared about my Nature's Cardigan by Ozetta Knitwear, and I actually had most of it knit up. I knit it completely with one sleeve missing and I had a bad feeling while making it that I was not going to love it because it was very big and I made it a little long and my gauge, even though I got gauge when I knit the pocket, it seemed loose so I didn't love the fabric either. So I decided to rip that out and restart and now we are almost back to where I was. Just this morning, I did the Kitchener stitch to kind of connect the front and the back. I think what was really tough about this one for me is that it's knit bottom up and I like to play kind of fast and loose with my gauge and with my sizing because I fit in between a lot of sizes. It's very hard for me to find one that just always works. So knitting from bottom up, I can't try it on and make increases and decreases as I go. So it's it's been a learning process for me and just one of those things that was almost unavoidable that I just kind of had to give it another go because I actually gauged because I was scared and it did not work out for me. But um, regardless, next time I will trust my gut a little more and when I feel like I need to rip back earlier, I will. I just have to add the neckband and the sleeves the buttons and this will be done and I'm already liking it much better. I tried it on and I like the length, I like the thickness, um, I can block it a bit if I need it to really have that boxy structure that I want to go for and I think it's just going to be much better this time around. This pattern is in a worsted weight 
I'm using the Cascade 220 Heathers in Japanese Maple. So I'm really liking that. Um, great pattern, especially if you only have to do it once. I'm getting a little tired of it, but that's only because this is my uh, second time around so close together with the same yarn. I am looking forward to maybe doing it again in a nice brown. I think that would be a really nice staple piece. I love the shape of it. And to kind of offset the monotony of that one, I have been working on my Yara Shaw by Natasha Hornby. And I have finished the first bit of the body. This is my first shawl, so it's been very interesting to um, kind of see how it knits up and when I, you know, finished this initial first part and cast off as I was getting to the end and it as soon as it had me start decreasing I was thinking um this looks a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be I was expecting this big billowy thing but of course after that you start another part so I'm about to cast on um I think one of two extra edges but don't quote me on that at all because I never read ahead in my patterns I'm very bad about that but I am really excited to see this grow because I think it's going to be gorgeous once it is its full size. I am using the Jameson Spindrift and it is a fingering weight for this one and I'm still really loving the color choices. Initially I was kind of afraid of this um, the contrasting greens, but I've totally moved on from that. I think it's great, covers up some mistakes, and I adore the pops of color from these gold colors. I think it's it's just perfect. And my last knitting project that I've been working on is my Caledonia coat, and I've actually broken new ground on this one. I am finally past the first rounds of the bottom cuff you have to knit it twice to add a lot of structure, which I love, but that was getting very monotonous. And it's also, um, I'm new to knitting with this Fair Isle yarn, which is very rustic and just constantly getting tangled doing that. So I was so happy to finally be past that part, but I, I love that. Now I'm into, the main body color work, which is this really nice um, dusty blue and sand color. I'm just barely starting on and I can show you what the actual yarns look like. But it consists of this really nice flowery pattern. You have to pay attention, which um, is risky with me, but I also really like. Um, it adds a lot of interest to the actual process of knitting it because you have your fronts, you have gussets on each side that you use to decrease um, as you move up the coat, and then back sections. And you actually do the gusset sections in the contrasting pattern, so you're looking at the same pattern going round, but you flip the colors. So I have to make sure that I stay <laughs> paying attention enough to where I don't um, mess that up, but I have not yet. I'm only like four rows in, so I can't pat myself on the back yet, but I think that um, is going to be fun. Love all of these colors together, and I'm, I'm so excited to have this finished and be able to finally wear it. This coat comes as a kit, so I had to actually use her yarns with it, and they are fingering weights, but they are just so good together and I want to make myself work on this a lot more this year. So next up I have what I have been crocheting and I am still working on my project using the Mini Cat Square by Pony McTate. And I'm making a fair amount of progress. I keep it in one of my love crafts bag so I can just quickly shove it into my bedside table. Uh, it's Right now it's a secret project for my daughter and I would like it to remain secret until it's finished so that I can surprise her. And here, some of the progress I've made. So I'm actually getting cats onto the squares. So I've been in the process of finishing up the cats and attaching them to the squares. I was able to find the safety eyes at 
my local hobby store, which was very exciting and so on, just little noses, ears. I think I gave one angry eyebrows because I think she'll get a kick out of that. But um, it has definitely made a change in what I will be actually doing with this because adding the safety eyes, um, you are essentially adding a plastic nail to your project. So that definitely ruled out the cardigan. And I could still just do a pillow like the original uh, pattern is made for, but I'm I'm still kind of leaning towards a bag. I think that it would be so cute for her to have a little cat purse and I think that she would like that more than a pillow but I'm still not ruling out my options. I will either have to find something to kind of cushion the blow even if I make a purse so that it doesn't snag anything in her bag even though it'll probably just be stuffed animals if we're being honest but I will have to decide what to do with um, maybe a lining We'll see, but I am just having a lot of fun with this still. I have so many of the squares <laughs> that I have been making. So what I've been doing is just waiting until she goes to bed and we've been either putting on a show or catching up on Critical Role and I've just been crocheting a ton of these little squares. And I feel like it's been really great for my crocheting because starting out, I. I'm a really harsh crocheter and my tension is really tight so my wrist hurts very easily. So I usually don't crochet very much but I feel like I'm starting to like find my groove. So that's been really nice because before um, it made me kind of nervous because my I felt like I was just always pulling it way too tight and I was afraid that I was going to um, hurt my wrists and I definitely have to be careful there. <laughs> Okay, so for my cross-stitching, I have been working on uh, pretty much the same projects that I mentioned last time. I'm trying to focus mainly on what I've already started and just try to make a lot of progress so I can move on to other things. I want to try to be careful and not get too many projects started. And I feel like there is a decent variety between what I'm working on now to have nice things to kind of bounce back and forth between. So the first one that I've been working on a lot is my West Highland Terrier by X Stitchery Shop on Etsy. And if you watched my video last time, um, a couple of things. One, I held it uh, this way and I did not realize for the entire time I was holding it up. So uh, this is actually the right way to hold it up. As you can see now we have an ear, we have some hair but um, I've made a lot of progress on this one since my last check-in and because I didn't take a picture afterwards, we're just starting this one, um, calling this one a wash and after this episode I will actually take pictures of all of my cross stitches and next time I'll show the progress that has been made since my last video. Anyway, I've made a lot of progress on this one. Um, Part of that is because once I started my new page, I really took the parking thing to heart and instead of just doing confetti-like stuff, I just stick to one color per square and now it's going so much faster because I still have, I still have a lot of holes over here because it was taking me so long and I was afraid I was just going to put it down and not want to pick it back up. So I decided to just start a new page. I'll work over here when I feel like it. And I think that the rest of this process is going to be a lot smoother. I also need, because I did start this one too close to the edge, one was just because I didn't know better. I was also trying to get the most out of this piece of fabric because it's one that I've kind of worked stuff out of this area and I just didn't want to whoops there I go again <laughs> I just didn't want to waste that much fabric so I need to get my sewing machine out and actually finish those edges before they fray too far down but yeah I'm really liking this one so far and it's been a nice change of pace once I started the new page 
Uh, it is 200 by 146 stitches, and this is being worked on 14 count Ada. And now that I'm getting to the dog, I think I'm going to have a lot more fun with this one. Next up, I have Dollhouse, and this is from the Etsy shop called At Antique Stitch. This is 193 by 261 stitches, and I'm doing this on 18 count Ada. So the last time I shared this one, I'm pretty sure I just had this much done. So I have made some decent progress on this one. I'm finishing up this page. I think it's page number four. And I have been adding in my back stitching, which I've been kind of on a kick of loving. It's kind of a love-hate thing. Sometimes it's um, a little finicky, but I really enjoy doing it and the effect that it causes by just making everything seem more finished. Yeah, I am really excited to make more progress on this. Uh, looking forward to jumping into the next floor of the house. That will be a lot of fun. And finally, something I've been so excited to start is a cross-stitch journal. So I was inspired by Michelle at Bindi Stitchy. She has a great YouTube channel. And after I saw her stitch journal, I became obsessed with the idea and decided to kind of look around the community to find other people who are doing this. So if this is something that you do, please share because I love it and I love looking at everybody's projects. But I did find um, Christine L. Uh, through doing this, who is another great YouTuber. And I was inspired by her to use a Dina Wakely journal. And I will put a link below, but it has, it's for mixed media and it has a lot of different kinds of pages. So you have watercolor paper, you have burlap, linen, and I knew that there would just be so many opportunities to work with this. So I finished my mini Flaming June and actually finished it into a journal. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I went pretty simple with my first spread. I just wanted to attach it to this burlap fabric and add some paper flowers. I am a scrapbooker, so I have a lot of ephemera. And I love that I have another way to use it and play with another creative outlet, which is always a lot of fun. I'm not sure how happy I am with the actual attaching of my work. I added the brown threading that looks like kind of a frame around it to kind of attach it, but I think it would have been just fine without adding that. And I think I maybe made it a little crooked, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really bother me. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really happy with the process and how fun it was to put it together. And I can't wait to experiment with this in the future. So I am back after a short break to talk about what I have been reading. For my reading wrap up in the last video, I mentioned that the Women's Prize for Fiction was coming up the long list so i thought i might do that again this year and i have had a really great reading year so far i've really been delving back into fantasy and sci-fi and finding a lot of stuff that i just really really loved and i was afraid that i wouldn't be able to kind of break out of that to get more into not only just literary fiction but i just didn't know if i would be in the right mindset to um, read a lot of bleak books right on top of each other again. So I cautiously planned and I decided to wait for the long list and try to put aside some of my fantasy books um, so that I wouldn't be tempted. And I started reading a book that I thought might be on the long list. And then in true form, I fell into a Karen Slaughter hole. <laughs> and, and I read, let me see, one, two, nine Karen Slaughter books since my last video. So I mentioned that I had started the Will Trent series with um, Triptych and I really enjoyed that. I read the second one, enjoyed that. And I saw that she was going to be merging characters from a different series that she had. I wanted to go back and give that a try 
And from there, things got a little chaotic. So I read the first one, which is called Blindsided, and it is the first of the Grant County series, which focuses on Sarah Linton and Jeffrey Tolliver. She is the medical examiner for the small town. He is the police chief. And you kind of learn about their relationship and all the relationships of the small town. I was kind of looking forward to it in the beginning because even though I grew up um, in small towns that I didn't particularly love, I still can't help but romanticize the thought of that and the thought of a kind of close-knit community, which was undone by these books. Um, it reminded me very much of why uh, small towns can be very frustrating. And after the, fir the first book was just kind of introducing everybody and it had an interesting case and I liked it all right. Uh, the second book, I was starting to like it less. I don't especially like the characters and that's fine. Usually she has really unreliable narrators and that's fine, but you usually have like somebody that you can relate to or root for. So after I read two and really did not enjoy that, I skipped to Grant County number four, which is called Indelible. Also did not enjoy that and decided I would just go back to the series that I liked. I can't really talk too much about how the story and the characters have progressed without giving a lot of way, but I did start enjoying it more because I enjoy all of the kind of consistent and reoccurring characters in this series, in the Will Trent series. So I know that I will always have uh, people to kind of root for and connect to on some level. Now this latest one that I've read anyways, The Kept Woman, which is number eight in the series, I think I have enjoyed the least so far. It wasn't terrible, but they're reading them so close together. There are certain things that just get um, a little old or a little too frustrating. The lesson there is don't read all of them like back to back maybe. Um, you might enjoy that one more, but I just wanted to kind of give an explanation for how everything just went off the rails. But that aside, I did finish The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. I talked about this book a little bit last time. Um, it's about the female aviator from the 50s, I think, around that time period. It's kind of her growing up, and it goes back and forth between um, some different perspectives and then an actress in 2014 or 2015 who wants to portray this woman in a movie. I had so many mixed feelings about this book because some things I really enjoyed and appreciated, but there were also parts that I despised. And I think it would have worked a lot better for me if maybe 200 pages were edited out. It sounds harsh, but it's a, like a 600 page book and there were huge parts that I just didn't feel were necessary and did not add enough to the story. There's also a big part of that is one of the main perspectives, which I feel like was only there to serve one purpose. And while I liked that purpose, there was just a lot of extra stuff that was kind of explored, but not really. Overall, I think I would give this book maybe a, just a safe three stars. It wasn't horrible, but there was too much of it that I just kind of found unnecessary. I also read The Paper Palace. This was by Miranda Cowley Heller. I kind of feel like these books are neck and neck um, if I were to be ranking them. This book, just like the last one, held my attention and it explored topics that I thought were really important. One thing I really like that Heller explored was how it feels to be a child of divorce in the ways where you are kind of in a vulnerable position and meeting a lot of strange people as your parents meet new people and strange people and becoming family, their extended families and just kind of how scary and weird that is. Um, I felt that was relatable as a child of divorce and how that carries into adulthood when you are still navigating these relationships with your parents and other people. And I think that that was done really well. That being said, I didn't feel like I could connect to any of the characters in this one either. 
and that's just so important for a story that is trying to be very emotional and justify um, some of the actions that take place. So I'd say it's probably an all right read. Um, I would maybe rank this a little higher than the last one just because it's not so long and there were definitely some unnecessary things but for the most part everything kept on track and on course to putting this story together. So while I've decided that I will mostly pay attention to the shortlist, I did decide to try another on the long list just because I was really interested in it, and that is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. This is about a woman who has just turned 40, and I am led to believe that she is kind of at a breaking point with her mental illness. It has been a nice easily digestible read so far but my first feelings when reading this is that the protagonist is kind of terrible but it wasn't long after reading a little bit of about her actions when there is a line where she talks about she has been trying to be the opposite of herself the entire life and I can really relate with that and I think that that is a very powerful idea to explore. And that is the reason that I picked up this book. I can't say too much about it yet because like I said, I've just started reading it, but I think that it's going to be a pretty quick read and I have high hopes for it so far, but we'll see. But that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. My goal is to have at least two of these projects done by the next time that you see me. But I hope that you have a great day as always, and I will hopefully see you very soon.